Um, some of you may have heard of what we're doing in terms of uh, citizen juries, and uh, I can talk about them in terms of they are randomly selected citizen panels that come together, commissioned either by local government, state government, or federal government increasingly now, to provide input, community input, into certain views, uh, in, into certain issues. Um, so that's kind of just background, but I thought I'd, I wanted to kind of unpick where we've got to in democracy generally in the West, and little did I know, but it, people have been talking about it, that the Magna Carta's anniversary is this year. And we in Australia happen to have a, an ancient copy. We, we actually have a copy in Parliament House which is on show at the moment, and this is it. Uh, this, this was a copy that was made in 1297, so the original, the original was, was signed in 1215 by King John and uh, with his rebellious barons, uh, basically to appease his rebellious barons, and that was, Mark, according to my understanding, the uh, genesis of the UK Parliament. So it's not quite a thousand years, but it's a th 800, which is close enough. <laughs> so here is, here is King Edward at the time. So what happens, King, King John's uh, uh, signing uh, or treaty, which was at the time was signed at, at near Windsor, uh, and uh, it only lasted for a year because um, uh, the, um, the king basically uh, reneged on his, on his treaty and kick the barons back to, to France. So eventually, anyway, after close to, whatever, 80 years, it was rat re ratified basically in the same way that uh, King John had done with the barons. Um, but this, so this Magna Carta, in my view, has kind of little to do with the original Democracia, which was originally conceived in ancient Greece. So the, the barons' feudal land tenure effectively became the, the, the credential for membership for parliament. And, you know, and as late as the US Declaration of Independence, which was about the same time as this picture of the uh, UK parliament under William Pitt the Younger, so late 1700s, the same criteria for membership still existed you effectively had to be a propertied landed gentry. And indeed, uh, even though there was votes were extended to the landed gentry still, uh, the concessions that, that were sought by the, 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 let's call them the local grandees, uh, basically meant that there was very little democracy in that, that, that sense. The Australian ballot, the secret ballot, was introduced first in the world here in Australia in 1856. So in the 1700s, there was, you know, you're, you're a man, forget about women of course, all due respect, you're only a man if you can put your hand up and say you're voting for the local grandee. So you can imagine how corrupt that situation was. So, but yet that has become the template for Western democracy, and the US adopted the same model. They called it, though, a natural aristocracy, because they didn't have a king, but they basically had everything else except the king. So the American founding fathers actually rejected the very word democracy, because it, re it referred to the Greek model, which basically included all men, rich and poor. So I think modern democracy was basically born of privilege and nurtured through class conflict. I wanted to sort of keep the discussion referencing town planning, so I've put in a sketch that sort of refers a little bit to an <laughs> urban landscape. And, but you know, the, all, all this, I'm, I'm really very pleased to be talking in this forum because uh, politics is kind of my hobby horse and passion and 
uh, the, the, to hear town planners and the, and the building community, the architectural community, talk in terms of politics being important in this, I think is, is, is obvious really, but it's very satisfying to hear that it's actually up on the table and it's, it's actually being considered as, as a, a relevant and I would say critical element to the whole question. So, conceived in partisan contest, initially as kings and barons, then as landed gentry in elections, the disenfranchised became Chartists. The Chartists were basically the first socialists. Then the ultra, the ultra disenfranchised became communists. So even though today the claims of effectively the working class and the suffragettes have been largely resolved, the saga continues in this fossilised relic of divisiveness. Modern democracy rejected the Athenian ideal of equality, wherein the poor, as much as the rich, were automatically accorded a place in government because they had a model called Cetitian, which was random selection amongst the ten tribes, and if you were selected, you served your duty in office, in government, for a year or so. It was like a national service, like a duty. But of course, there's a whole series of questions that come up when we have these citizen juries. People talk about, oh, they can't possibly be competent. What do they know? And so we've, we go through this discussion, and I'll come back to it. So in this 800th year of the anniversary of the Magna Carta, Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg decided as a New Year resolution to start a reading list. And the first book that he selected for the reading list was a book that I actually re re recommended myself before he did. Uh, <laughs> and it's called The Power... Uh, sorry, The... the um, uh, the End of Power by no Moses Nyme. And in this, in this book, the proposition is that power is so diffuse now, particularly with the internet and better education, that we, we expect to, to basically have, have our say. We all expect to have our, somehow have some say in what is happening. And we now have the tools. So the notion that of unassailable authority is a thing of the past, I would suggest. Even though, of course, you have the, um, the, the great power, you know, the American uh, Pax Americana uh, still is with us, but of course we are even here seeing that that very notion of their supremacy is being challenged, not just by the Chinas of the world, but by in their own internal uh, a conception of themselves as a democracy or as a, you know, as a nation state. And the first thing that people do in these nation states is refer, and Americans, with all due respect to any Americans in the audience, the Americans are the first to point out that they, they invented democracy and their democracy is the best in the world. And just look at what's happening now with their democracy in terms of this current election campaign. So, in this era of... Uh, here comes everybody, uh, we feel empowered to live a more self-directed life and we expect to do, to do so with cheaper and smarter tools. Our social and political networks have exploded into myriad tribes, yet our greater desire is for collaboration. So how do we affect this collaboration when we're talking with strangers, which is what we need to do uh, and to accommodate each other's different points of view. The Economist magazine last year talked about uh, an existential crisis in democracy in the UK. Th that's their words. Uh, I think that definition, that, that description can be applied to most Western democracies, if not all democracies really. As the tribal be drums beat on the heart of the public realm, the only paradigm is one of campaigning candidates and of government and opposition. In this cacophony of rhythms, there is a desperate competition for relevance, peppered with rhetoric and hyperbole. 
our politicians, wizened representatives forged in electoral bear pits, entreat us to believe that they can be no more deserving. Raised on this bloody battlefield, modern democracy knows nothing but a brutish struggle for power and no other means by which to achieve equality and dignity. <clears throat> so this, I thought, was a kind of interesting uh, graphic sculpture uh, which can sort of give a sense of modernity and the different, different uh, characters that th these tribes are bringing to a community and let this community be conceived here as a city, if you like. How do you resolve all of these, 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 these distinctions? The, the, the original conception of democracy, the, when I say the original, the conception in Western, uh, uh, modern Western terms is this one here. This is the famous picture that Thomas Hobbes drew in 1651 uh, as the frontispiece to his book called The Leviathan. And so this has been the model that we think is the appropriate model for Western democracy. We all have, uh, virtually he's been seen as the master of, of political philosophy, uh, the, or the, 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 gr the grand old master of political philosophy. Uh, if you look at the, his, on one, in one hand he's got the sword, in the other hand he's got the church staff. If you look at his mail, the coat that he's wearing, it's all little individual people not looking at us, but with their backs to us looking to him. So I, I see this as... He, 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 he described this as the social contract, whereby power, both material and spiritual, can only be exercised by a centre of the people. Seemingly just and fair, we've accepted this. This metaphor persists today. But the premise is that of acceding to a supreme authority, more imposed than implied. The great genius of democracy as it originally conceived, it was automatically implied because it embraced the community from the start. You might say that original conception of democracy as a jury, just like a jury, might be well representative, but it can't possibly be competent. Well, that's why we do citizen juries. Every citizen jury, and this was the great light bulb moment for me, when we did our first big jury in Canberra with 150 Australians from all over the country, they came together to discuss how we might do government together. These people had never met themselves before, rather, they, when they were selected, we had regional meetings, they came to Canberra. <clears throat> what I discovered there is the, the great intelligence that comes when people are given the opportunity to hear from the, practi the practitioners, the, the so-called expert, so expert practitioners, and I mean that with, with the greatest of respect because I'm conscious of the fact that here as professionals, as planning professionals, as architectural professionals, we, we I'm an architect too, we have great understanding of the dynamics that, that uh, come to bear on, the, on place making in cities. Just as we've heard from Marcus and, and Mark, we need to bring those to, to, to the table. But for, for, the, for the political acceptance of this, let there be the centre of the, of the room, let the centre of the room be the community. And the community is best represented, represented by a random selection, by lot. Now this just seems to be quite radical. And, and I, with the Localism Act, uh, the, the, the big issue, it, it's great that localism, and, and I, I accept the criticisms that you make about uh, how that might work better in the country, in the rural areas rather than the urban areas, Mark. Uh, I, th I think there's, is, it has got potential. Uh, the fact, though, that it is self-selecting is problematic. Uh, we would not, as, an, as a foundation, recommend 21 people first in the door 
because what happens is you get the self-interested and the articulate that do that. They're not necessarily, necessarily represent, representative. Now, I thought I'd... I'm close. I'm, I've got to finish with a couple of home, home, homely slides. This, <laughs> this is... Um, I, was, I was born in the 50s in the Aussie American dream. Uh, this, this is kind of that, uh, uh, not, not entirely, you know, with the kids in the fr backyard and, 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 the, and the wife there. Yeah, and it's not really my wife and my, my mother. Um, <laughs> but, you, you know, we all come with different per perceptions, perspectives of things. You know, uh, today a young urbanite might see that as their uh, particular, uh, you, you know, lifestyle, let's call it what you like, dream. I don't know. What I'm saying is that we'll never know until we ask, the, you know, we let them come together and share those dreams together and form whatever it is the community they want to form and hear from people like ourselves as to what are the other dynamics that are, that are forming or a bearing on those placemaking issues. Um, so all I would ask is that you be with us. When I say us, you be with the community, that the professionals be with, see yourselves on the side of the community. I, I really take, uh, um, I have a real objection to the notion that the community has not got the capacity to understand economic growth or these uh, uh, more complex drivers that, that people think is not in the capacity of people out there in TV land. I don't accept that. You give the community, just like a, like a criminal jury, the opportunity to determine on effectively life and death, and they make very sensible decisions when, they, when they're put to it. Thank you.